Hey guys, welcome to Tech Tutorials. Today I'm going to show you how to set up RetroPie with the Raspberry Pi and connect a controller to it. To follow this guide, you will need a Raspberry Pi, for good support it should be a Model 1B Plus or higher, along with its standard accessories including a power cord and supply, a display with the fitting connecting cable, USB keyboard and a 4GB SD or micro SD card depending on your model. You will also need a computer with an internet connection and, if you want to use it, one of the following controllers. Pause the video if needed. To get started, navigate to the first link in the description of this video on your computer and choose the right image for your model of the Raspberry Pi. Next, let's image our SD card. Start by inserting it into your computer. On Mac OS X, log into an administrator account and navigate to the second link in the description. Scroll down the page and click the green download button to download Apple Pie Baker, the software we're going to use for imaging the SD card. Next, launch the Apple Pie Baker software and enter your admin password. Once the program has opened, make sure to choose your SD card from the menu on the left. Then click the Prepare for Noobs button. Click OK again and your SD card will be formatted. Once the formatting is completed, choose your RetroPie image from the location you downloaded it to from the menu on the left. Last, click Restore the Backup to image the SD card. Once the imaging process is completed, the SD card is ready. Just make sure to eject it properly before removing it to avoid corruption to the files. On Windows, launch the Computer Management tool. Once it's opened, select Disk Management, choose your SD card off of the list in the bottom and perform a right click. Click OK and in the next window, make sure the format is FAT32. Give it a name of your choice and click OK twice. After a short time, your SD card should be formatted and ready for imaging. Next, go to the 7-zip download page from the description and choose the download link for your computer. To install it, double-click the downloaded file and navigate through the following installation window. Before we can use the RetroPie IMG file in Windows, we have to extract it. To do so, we'll use the 7-zip program we downloaded previously. On the downloaded IMG file, perform a right-click and choose Extract Files. In the new window, pick a destination and leave everything else as it is. Click OK and after that process, your IMG file will be waiting in the chosen destination. The last program we need to download is Windows 32 Disk Manager. Navigate to the right link in the description and click the download button. After a short period, your download should begin. As before, double click the downloaded file and navigate through the following wizard to install the program. Last, open the Win32 Disk Manager and make sure the selected device is your SD card. Then, choose your extracted RetroPie image file from the location you saved it to. Leave everything else as it is, click Write and OK. Then wait for the imaging process to complete. After it is finished, be sure to properly eject the SD card to prevent damage to the files. After either of these imaging processes, your SD will be imaged and ready for use in the Raspberry Pi. Now let's boot up the Raspberry Pi. Insert the imaged microSD into the Raspberry Pi and connect it to your power supply, your keyboard and your monitor. It will take some time for RetroPie to boot for the first time. After it is done, you will see the welcome screen from where we will proceed to connect our gamepad. Last, let's connect our controller. Connect it to your Raspberry Pi using the controller's USB cable or wireless adapter. Emulation Station will automatically recognize it and give you the mapping screen where you can map the controls to your controller's buttons. After that, click OK and you will be redirected to the home screen of Emulation Station. And that was it! If this video helped you, please leave a like and subscribe to stay updated in the future. From here you could either watch my last Raspberry Pi setup tutorial, or check out my last video on how to play PS4 audio through 3.5mm speakers.